Welcome to Grow Life. We also have an amazing guest here. Her name is Ali Katz. Ali is the founder of New Law Business Model. Ali, I've been following your content for a number of years now. I think it's absolutely amazing. I find that your slogan on the website, Build a Life and the Practice You Love, is very similar to how I think about the clients who we help, which my slogan is better business, better life, but you and I have very different approaches. I am really focused on the numbers, and when I put your content, it's a level about love, feelings, a great laugh. I want you to talk about new law business model and how you help. I know that primarily you work with estate planning attorneys, but I think what you're talking about is applicable to anyone and everyone. And I'll preface this also with, I was at a legal conference back in November. I was talking to one attorney, criminal defense attorney, and he said something so profound. He's like, look around. Everyone here hates what they do, except for state planning attorneys. It's true. Building a life and law practice that you love, I think, is just so profound to anybody who's in the legal profession. So I turn it over to you. You talk. Great. Well, Sasha, thank you so much for having me here today. And one of the things that I do want to clarify is that while I'm all about love, I'm also all about the numbers. And the numbers actually are part of what lead to love. And that's a really big thing for lawyers to get because it's a both and. It's not, oh, I can love my business if I don't have to think about the numbers. You have to think about the numbers because numbers are what impacts everything that we do. The numbers though are not just the financial numbers. They're not just the number of people that see you online. They are the numbers that relate to your time. What is it that creates a life that we love? It is how, what you do with your time. We all have 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's the common denominator among all of us. And it is our time, energy, and attention that are non-renewable resources. Money is actually infinitely renewable, especially for lawyers, Sasha. When we start thinking about the numbers in the right way, which I think you're really going to get this and maybe already even agree with it. Once we start thinking about the numbers in the right way, we realize, oh, wow, if I'm using my law degree to provide a high value service that people want and need, no matter what happens in the economy, no matter what happens with the AI, a, a high value service that people want and need. And I know how to educate people in my community and bring those people into an intake and engagement structure with the right numbers and engage the right number of clients at the right average fee every month. Wow, money is infinite. Money's not an issue anymore because I can make more of it. What I can't make more of is my time, energy, and attention. And so we want to use numbers to map out exactly what does a law practice look like that allows you to love your life being built around a service that is high value that you love to deliver to clients you love to serve. It's why people love estate planning. It's why the, what you said, the only lawyers that love what they do is estate planning lawyers because we don't have to deal with opposing counsel. We don't have to be at the whim of the court system. We get to work with clients we absolutely love and we can say no to the clients that we don't want to serve because we know we can only actually serve if we're doing it in a really high value way. The lawyers in our programs, they will only serve between four and let's call it 20 new clients a month depending on the practice model they choose. There's three practice models. There's one of the numbers, three practice models. And within those practice models, they're serving between four and six new clients a month. That's our solo. 10 to 12 or maybe 12 to 15 new clients a month. That's our staffed practice model. Or 20 and up new clients a month. That's our million dollar empire builder. But when you're not, when that's all that you know that you need to serve each month four to 20, the most, let's call it at, a, at an outlier. We have some lawyers that are doing 40 a month, right? So there's still only 500 new clients a year. You know exactly what that average fee is. Then you can build a business around those numbers, especially Sasha, when you know that you can engage 80% plus, and that's our minimum, 
80% plus of the people you sit down with who need your services. Many of our lawyers engage 100% of the people they sit down with are very close to it, of the people who need their services. That's part of why they love their lives and law practices. Because a big reason why lawyers do not love their law practice is they feel like they have to convince people to work with them. They meet with so many people who are like, oh, how much is a will? Oh, I'm just shopping around. Oh, I have to think about it. It's, ugh. Nobody wants that, right? We, we, don't, we don't like that. It doesn't feel good to have to like persuade people to work with us, to feel rejected all the time, to feel that people don't even like us, don't appreciate our services. Well, with estate planning, because of the numbers, we get to love our lives and law practices because you have an average fee, when you do it the way we teach, of four to $6,000. That's your minimum average fee. Some clients will pay just 2,000. Some will pay eight. Some are going to pay 10, 12, 20 if you're doing the higher end services, but average two to 8,000. So four to $6,000 on average. And you engage 80% minimum of the clients you meet with. Now you've got a business. Now you can build that business into a business that you love with a service that you love to deliver for people that you love to work with. It's built on the numbers. But at its heart and soul is love. You only do what you love. Mm. That's very interesting. I've never heard anyone put it so eloquently as you just did. I think one of the focal points what I've seen in your content is that you help attorneys transform from overworked, overstressed, and underpaid to somebody who loves what they do. A few weeks ago, I saw a video where you were chatting with, I think, a spouse of an attorney who is a member in your program. Yeah. I think you got teary-eyed through that short video. It was like two, three minutes long, and she was talking about how much you helped not just her husband, but yeah. the entire family transform their lives. I want to understand, like, how do you help your clients transform from point A, which we'll call overworked, overstressed, underpaid to point B where they love their life and really enjoy their practice of law. Mm -hmm. What's the process? Yes. So that that uh, that lawyer's wife that you were uh, seeing me speak to, her name is Amzi and her husband is John, John Heck. He's uh, uh, an estate planning lawyer in Virginia. And when John came to us, he was not happy with his life as a lawyer. And she was not happy with the life he was leading, the man he was being, and she knew that he could be so much more. And part of what we've seen is that who we are at work and how we have to be at work influences how we are with our families, right? And I really got this when I had an in-person event. And at this in-person event, I asked the lawyers, why did you join us? And this one lawyer, his name is Aaron, he raised his hand and he said, I joined you because I was a litigator and I had filed interrogatories and I was calculating when the interrogatories would be due. And then he says, I, I found out that they would be due in a way that they would ruin opposing counsel's Christmas. And I was halfway through my fist bump in the air celebrating ruining somebody's Christmas when I realized I'd become a man who celebrates ruining somebody's Christmas. And that I had brought home with me and I knew I had to make a change. And today he has a thriving estate planning practice that he absolutely loves. So when you say, how do we transform people? How do we transform lawyers' lives? Well, first of all, we teach them to be estate planning lawyers, but obviously it's not just that because there's plenty of estate planning lawyers actually who don't love their lives. So it's, of course, it is more than that. We, the way we teach them to do estate planning is very different. It's very different than the traditional model of estate planning that I learned, for example, in law school that most lawyers have learned in law school or that they've practiced in um, other law firms. It is heart-centered. And it is a counseling-based methodology that helps the lawyers to really help their clients to look at what matters to them most. And we call it life and legacy planning because what we're doing is we're teaching the lawyers 
to take their clients through a process right in the initial meeting. And that's what's so exciting about this. It's like the thing that you used to think of as your sales conversation, your initial consultation actually becomes this meeting, which we have all scripted out. It's the first thing that we teach in our programs. It becomes this meeting where you have such a heart connection with your clients that you actually really feel love for them and they actually really feel love for you. And when you feel love in your work, you begin to transform as a person. You begin to transform as a person because no longer are you celebrating can't, opposing can't, that you've ruined somebody's Christmas, but you actually every day feel more and more love for your clients and more and more love for the work that you're doing. And when you feel more and more love for the work that you're doing and the person that you're becoming, the person that you need to become in that process, your entire life transforms. And part of what we teach is what I call relational law. So Sasha, you've heard of transactional law. You've heard of litigation. Those were the only models that were taught. But now I've created something called relational law. Maybe you've even heard of collaborative law. This is not that. Relational law is where we use our law degree to actually be in connection and relationship with people in a way that shifts the way they feel about themselves. So imagine getting to use your law degree in a way that helps somebody know that they're doing the right thing by the people they love, that they've become a better parent through the process, that they've become a better business owner through the process, that they've become a better member of their community through the process. The person that you become is the person you've always wanted to be. It's the reason you went to law school and you get to do this through the service that you provide. We just haven't been given these service models before. That's why I invented New Law Business Model. That's why I wrote the book, New Law Business Model. And by the way, Sasha, I'll say this, that while our training programs currently only serve estate planning lawyers, my book was written for all lawyers. We need more lawyers to implement new law business models. For the estate planning lawyers, we give the estate planning lawyers everything, the engagement system, the intake scripts, the um, uh, how to serve the clients, the service model, the pricing and packaging, all those things, because I built all that for myself. So we give them what I built for myself. But I am praying that some lawyer who does divorce, some lawyer who does bankruptcy, some lawyer who does other practice areas will take my book, create it in that model, and then one day be teaching it through new law business model because we need it for all of these other practice areas as well. We just only have it right now all literally mapped out from a business. Like I can just give you the business system for life and legacy planning. I can give you the personal family lawyer brand for life and legacy planning because I did it for myself and hundreds of lawyers. But we hope to expand it into divorce and bankruptcy and other practice areas that really need it over time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the lady who was in that video with you, you said her husband's name is John Hack. She, if I remember the video, I think she is well into her 40s, maybe early 50s. I assume that her husband is in the same age category. So that guy must have been unhappy for some time yeah. before he came to your group and made the decision to transition yeah. from the point a of being over overstressed underpaid to what yeah. he is today according to his wife's testimonial a much happier person a better husband a better family man etc etc which is amazing yeah. um so in my understanding is that you help probably help john make more money get more sure. of his time back feel better about his life and stress less. So when I think about those four points, like how, other than the scripts and helping him transition from whatever practice area he was in into estate planning, what else is there that helped him move from point A to point B? 
we're teaching him how to build a business mm -hmm. around that service, right? Mm -hmm. So there's many lawyers that are doing estate planning, but they don't have businesses. When I was first building my practice, I was a brand new mom. Well, I had two kids at that point. My husband was a stay-at-home dad. One of my children was just born. The other was four. I left the big law firm. I left the security of my six-figure paycheck. I didn't know anything about business whatsoever. I had to reinvent the wheel from scratch. I was doing estate planning. I was even part of an organization where I saw other lawyers that were like charging $5,000, $6,000 for an estate plan. So like I knew that I could do that, but I wasn't doing it. So half the time I would meet with somebody and they'd leave my office without hiring me. Or the one time that I finally did engage somebody at $5,500 they called me two weeks later to cancel because they'd found what they thought was exactly what I said I would provide for less than half the cost at $2,500. And I couldn't explain the difference between what they were paying me $5,500, they were paying that guy $2,500. And one day I came in on a Saturday expecting to have three client appointments, which would pay my all, all my bills for the month. I thought I'd be making $10,000 that month. And all three of the clients canceled. So all of these times I wanted to quit because I didn't know how to build a business. The first person I hired was like the worst assistant you could ever imagine me having, right? And then when I looked around the office, I was renting office space from uh, an estate planning attorney who had been in practice uh, 25 years and I was trading him. I didn't have money. I didn't have money at the time. So I'm trading him 20 hours a month for the rent because I didn't have any money to pay rent. So I would go into the office and I'd see these other lawyers and they're working all hours of the day and night because they had to. It wasn't like law firm management was making them do it. They were the law firm management, they, but they didn't have any lives because they didn't have any systems. But I didn't even know what systems were because I didn't know anything about business, right? So that's how it is for most estate planning lawyers. You know, Maybe they're charging $1,500 or $2,000 for an estate plan and yet it's hard for them to even get that especially now with the rise of Rocket Lawyer, TrustandWill.com, LegalZoom, all these things, right, that now we're competing against. I didn't even have to compete against that 20 years ago. So what we're teaching John or what we've taught John is how to build a business. So what we start with is the service model. What we start with is learning how to do life and legacy planning, learning how to do estate planning in this unique way that we teach that increases the value of the service because you've got to have a high value service. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we teach, we teach, we touch on how to engage clients because if you don't know how to engage clients, you don't have a business. So for example, Sasha, you, your services are all about marketing and many lawyers think, oh, I got to market, I got to market, I got to market, I got to market. And then they say, oh, my marketing's not working, my marketing's not working, my marketing's not working. What's really not working, and I bet you see this all the time, is you're generating leads for them all day long, but they're not engaging the clients because they don't know how, because they don't have systems in place to make sure that their marketing turns into paid clients. So the very first thing that we teach after the service is how to engage clients using our proprietary model and that proprietary model in and of itself is the transformational heart-centered counseling based methodology right from the start so now i know how to engage clients and get hired now it makes sense for me to build a business so then we teach the lawyers how to build a business around that service how to get out in their community and be a leader how to get, get out in their community and educate people, how to build a team, how to invest in their marketing in the right way, when to build a website, what to put on their website. We give them all of that. When to start doing presentations, what to do in the presentation. We give them all that. So then we're teaching them how to build a business. And then if they need more support on the heart-centered level, we have some in-person trainings where we teach the art of connection. The art of connection. How do I connect with myself? How do I connect with you? How do I go to a networking event and have everybody that I meet there say, wow, you don't seem like a lawyer. How can I work with you? Because they're just like wowed by you. 
So we teach that as well. And when you put all of that together, you've got a happy lawyer who loves their life and law practice, especially when you add in the community component, right? Because all of that is in service to being what we call a personal family lawyer. And Sasha, today we have over 460 lawyers that are licensed by us as personal family lawyer firms to utilize our brand, to be listed on our website, to utilize our marketing, to utilize our website copy, to utilize our uh, article content and our presentations. And I know you offer SEO as one of the, the things that you do. So I will say that we don't do SEO for them. They have to customize what we give them uh, to have it really work. So it's personal to them, but we give them the base level of everything so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. And that makes them happy lawyers too, because that's a lot to reinvent the wheel. The valuable points there, I think the one that I really appreciate, and this is something that I also talk about with lawyers and my speeches, my writings, that the lawyers who are very successful by any measure of success, tend to be the ones that developed a great deal of business business acumen, which is not something that's taught in law schools. It is taught to a somewhat of a limited degree in business schools. And the reason why I say it's to somewhat limited degree limited. is because right. lawyers, lawyers are small business owners. 67% of all lawyers work in law firms with fewer than 10 attorneys. Those law firms, right. whether your name is on the door or not, you own yeah. a business. You eat what you yeah. kill. That yeah. type of business acumen is not taught in Harvard business. It's not all taught in both school of business here in Chicago. It's just not taught. This is something that you either have to learn on your own, which I get to speak to hundreds of lawyers every year. Most of yeah. them, unfortunately for them, have learned to know business acumen. Sometimes there are exceptions, but yeah. most of them don't. So mm -hmm. it sounds like what you do is you're filling in this major gap that most lawyers have, which we'll just call business acumen. And, and you focus on, so there are five functional zones when I think about the business, right? There's marketing that attracts a prospective client. There's sales that converts a prospect into a paying customer. There's operations that delivers the service. There's HR, recruiting, hiring, training, improving performance, firing of your team. And then there is leadership slash management that oversees it all, so sets objectives, develops plans, ensures that those plans get implemented. If I understood you correctly, Ali, you're really focused on the operations piece and the sales piece. And you touch on so many other facets, but the emphasis is really on building that perfect operations piece where your prospects come to you and they love what they hear from you. And thus the sales becomes natural instead of more sell, and you can replace it with help and people want to hire you. Is that correct or am I missing something? Well, I would say that a healthy business has what we call six systems and they're all critically important, right? There's four front, four, four front facing systems and then two operations systems, I guess I would say, right? So what I, the way I look at it is, you need a system for attracting clients, marketing. You need a system for engaging clients, sales. You need a system for serving those clients with your product, high value service. Service. You need ideally as well in the estate planning world, a system then for keeping those clients, clients for life on a recurring revenue model. Because in estate planning, if you don't keep them for life, you lose a substantial amount of the revenue potential in your practice because, and the impact, because then you end up putting in place just documents for people that are going to fail when their family needs them because they're not updated, assets aren't owned in the right way. And then that family is going to go somewhere else for the administration of the plan. So you've just lost half of the value of what you could be providing. So you, then the fourth system is a system for keeping those clients for life for serving them for life. Those are the four front facing systems. Then you've got the back facing the operation systems of your metrics, your own time, your own money, and um, uh, your financial goals, you know, setting those, 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 uh, those goals. And then 
and then hiring and training a team. Ideally, your team is going to be running your systems, but maybe not, right? Many of our lawyers are solos, so they're doing their own marketing. They're doing their own sales. They're doing their own service. They're doing their own recurring revenue program. They've got technology to support them. And we want to set our goals, managing our metrics, in alignment with that if that's what they want. Great. Okay, well, you can only see four to six new clients a month. You can't handle, you don't have capacity for more than that. So your goal, your financial reality is limited by your capacity. Oh, okay. You you want to build a million dollar business. Okay, great. Then let's set your goals for that. Let's build a team for that. That's going to be a different size team. That's going to be different size operations. Maybe, maybe even you're going to have an operations manager. Maybe you're not even going to be build, you know, uh, doing the operations yourself, but there's a big gap between a solo and somebody who's got an operations manager. So how, how do you even, how do you even get there? Well, it's going to be through sales. Well, who's going to do those sales? Well, at the solo model and the staff, staffed practice model, you're going to do those sales as the lawyer. You have to. That's what the model requires. At the million dollar empire builder model, we have lawyers who don't do, don't do their own sales. We have lawyers at the million dollar empire builder who are just in the seat of visionary. That's it. They set the goals. They lead the team. They don't sell. They don't even serve the clients anymore, but they are still serving the clients because they've built the system to serve the clients. They ensure that the system continues to run, but they've built also something that they can sell one day. It's not dependent on them. That's a much different operational model. Does that make sense? I have not laid my hands on your book yet. Do you cover all of this or most of this in the book? Yes, I don't think we cover the six systems in depth in the book. We cover the five shifts that lawyers need to make to implement a new law business model. Um, and uh, we cover, actually we do cover the six systems, but in a slightly different way. We do take the six systems more in depth in our, in our teachings. Uh, in our online teachings. Um, so every month I do a masterclass of some kind. And um, uh, we, th they're currently, they're free masterclasses, although we will be packaging them up so that people can buy them after the fact. Um, so they don't have to wait a whole year, you know, for it to come around again. Um, they can just get it right away. So so we're working on on packaging those up. And um, and then, so we really teach the six systems that way. So for example, I just did my time management workshop. Um, the next one we have is, uh, independent civic stewardship. And then we have one on the high value service, how to create that high value service. And so, um, I think you should read the book <laughs> for sure. Uh, and then get into our free master classes every month and, and perhaps, you know, if you're not doing estate planning, you'll just want to purchase the bundle of all of the master classes when that's ready. And um, I mean, the best thing that people can do really, Sasha, is to, if they do estate planning or want to do estate planning, is to just join us as a personal family lawyer firm. And we'll just literally hold their hand through the whole process and walk them through the whole process. As I mentioned, but I highly recommend that if you're a lawyer who is not completely satisfied with your business, with your life, if you feel overworked, underpaid, overstressed, any, any mix of those three, you should probably get the book. And the reason why I'm such a big fan of reading nonfiction business books is because it may take you a lifetime to figure things out, or a typical book takes about five to six hours to read. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I will say that everything that I've created, literally everything that I've created has happened because I saw somebody else go first. And so in my mind, I have been able to expand my own possibility, my own thinking of possibility by reading from other people who have done what I wanted to do, even having my own business. I didn't 
ever think of having my own business. You know, I went to Georgetown Law and the focus is on get a job at the best law firm you possibly can. So I did that. Lunger Tolson Olson, best law firm that I could get a job at, six figure paycheck. But I was so unhappy. And so I was uh, at a women's event and I heard this woman, she was talking about branding. I didn't hear a word she said about branding. What I heard her say is that she worked from home. She loved her business. She was there when her son got home from school. She loved her clients. And I was like, what is this? I want that. And I went out and I bought her book right then and there. Again, not because I desired to learn anything about branding at that time, but because I wanted to get a clue on what did she do to have this. Funny enough, I ended up in the acknowledgement section, reading her acknowledgement to her coach. And this was 20 years ago. Coaching was not a thing. And I was like, coach, what's that? And I contacted her coach and ended up hiring her coach, even though my mind, my lawyer mind was saying, what's this coach going to teach you? You graduated first in your class from Georgetown Law. This coach is not, not as smart as you. But I was like, no, mind. This, this coach must know something that I need to know. Because she... This woman loves her life, and I don't. And so I, you know, with humility, was was able and willing to ask for help. Yeah. And just through, you know, throughout throughout my life, the only reason that I've done anything that I've done is because I've seen somebody else do it. If she can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. And I've gotten myself close to those people who have done it, done what I wanted to do, overcoming a lot of mindset blocks, a lot of mindset blocks along the way so that I could do it myself. And any person that's listening right now, any person, any person, any lawyer, please use me as an example of if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. You can love your life as a lawyer. You can absolutely, no matter what, if that is what you want, you can. And please use me as, as a living example. And I promise that you'll find some inspiration in my book as well as some very practical steps that you can take to, to love your life and your law practice. I think from what you just said, I always think that most people who have become very successful have learned from the others. One of the best examples that I know of, and everyone knows the name, is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, at the right age of 11, read every book on finance in the local library mm. in Baltimore, Nebraska. Then his family moved to Washington, D.C., and he was spending days and nights at the Congressional Library, reading everything that he could read about finance. And then when he went on to Columbia, he had a teacher there who became his mentor, who he worked mm -hmm. under, I believe his name was mm -hmm. David Graham, and he worked under him for a number of years. Nobody's mm -hmm. a genius. I've been operating businesses since end of 2000, so a little over 22 years now. For the past decade and a half, I've had coaches and advisors, mm -hmm. coaches and advisors. Mm -hmm. There was no point in that time when I thought that that was a waste of time or a waste of money. Mm. I see that mm. every year my business keeps getting better and I can attribute at least a part of that growth to my advisor. I advisor, I hire my advisors very tactically. When I see an issue in my business, I hire an expert in that issue and we usually work together for a year and then we reevaluate if the problem has already gone away or if the problem is still there, or I just want to make it grow bigger, then we continue. It's amazing how the result can be amplified and the timeline can be shortened by getting the right person in the right place. And by the way, they take no equity in your business. They do not take up an office within your office. Mm. It's, it's a very easy investment of money because it gives you so much more in return. Elliot, I highly recommend that people who listen to this buy your book, New Law Business Model. It's available on Amazon, terrific reviews. And check out your website, which is also newlawbusinessmodel.com. Thank you so much. This was a riveting conversation. Thank you, Sasha. Thanks so much for having me today. And that's a wrap. Amazing insights, really. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. 
our production okay. team is running, I think about three, four weeks or so. I will be sending you okay. recording and quotes. Can they grab your pictures from your website or is there an image that you prefer and you could email it to me and then they'll incorporate it into those quote pictures? Yeah, if you could um, email me at Ali at newlawbusinessmodel.com and then I can connect you with my team and they can give you pictures and links as well. We um, we can probably even give you a link for people to get a copy of the book for free um, as well as um, uh, a link to our Facebook group where people can join our group. Yep. I'll send you the email right now so I don't forget it. Okay, that'd be wonderful. Thanks, Ellie. Enjoy Costa Rica. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Yep. Talk, Talk later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.